Shepherd. Tommy Shepherd. Yeah. 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 Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the uh, Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster for advance side of the statement. It, it allows me to begin by pointing out the glaring omission in what he told the House a few moments ago. He really ought to have started by thanking Lady Hale and her fellow judges in the Supreme Court <laughs> for the decision they took yesterday, because without that judgment, he would not have had the opportunity to come to the House today and explain the government's preparations, and we would not have the opportunity to see in all its glory just how woefully inadequately prepared the government actually is. Um, and I don't put this down to a lack of effort on the government's path. I'm sure his exo committee is in permanent session almost, and we know from the Honourable Member for uh, the Right Honourable Member for Hastings and Rye that the government is fixated almost to the exclusion of everything else in preparations for a no deal. But the fact that we are so far away from concluding those preparations is simply a testament to the enormity of the task and the fact that it is simply not doable in the next five weeks. Here, here. And as a result of this, rather than be honest with the House, the Secretary of State is indulging in euphemisms and wishful thinking and banter and jokes. And the truth of the matter is that he's trying to sugarcoat what is a disastrous situation. And that begins with the very title of the document itself. And I return to the point raised by the opposition spokesperson. In the document, the very same document that was given to the Scottish Government, the First Minister of Scotland has confirmed that that was referred to as a base scenario. And yet several days later, when it is published, it is referred to as a worst-case scenario. An attempt to suggest that, of course, there are much better scenarios and there is nothing really to see and no need to worry. So I ask again, and I don't want a joke in response, who made the decision to change that title and why? There are other things throughout this document which show the degree of sugar feeding as well, but probably one of the most bizarre things the Secretary of State has just said is he said a few moments ago that UK citizens would have visa-free travel throughout the EU. Well, that's just rubbish. That's <laughs> nonsense. In the event of a no deal, the very fact of a no deal means that there will not be that. That's what no deal actually means. So either, either this is an exercise in self-delusion or a willful attempt to meet, meet, mislead the House, but well, whatever it is, it most certainly is not the truth, and we ought to be given the truth. Mr Speaker, surely the point is this, and this is my principal question to the Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster. Surely the time has come now to assess. Is it realistically possible to get a deal to leave the European Union on the 31st of October? The House has considered this question and come to a judgment that it probably would not be possible, and therefore it is necessary for the Government to apply for an extension to the process. I want to know from the Minister, will he accept that mandate from this Parliament? Will he do an act as a member of this Government to make sure that it is implemented, or will he continue? to flout the will of the House and proceed on preparations which, frankly, are to prepare for a situation which is now unlawful according to the law of the land. So I want to know, will he commit to discharging the mandate given to him? Will he follow the law of the land? And also, will he confirm to the House whether or not he has had discussions with the Prime Minister about doing anything other than that? Yeah. I'm very grateful to the Honourable Member for Edinburgh East for his questions. And may I also say that I'm grateful to the Supreme Court for the clarity of their judgment. And in addition, I'm also grateful to his colleagues in the Scottish Government for the extensive work that they have done, along with other devolved administrations, to help us prepare for a no-deal exit. Only yesterday, um, I was chairing a committee meeting at which the uh, Scottish uh, Cabinet Secretary responsible for uh, agriculture and rural affairs was, along with other devolved administration ministers, actively taking steps in order to ensure that his constituents were actively ready to prepare for a no-deal Brexit. And I think it's only right that we should record our thanks to the civil servants and devolved administrations as well for that work. Um, now, I, I do not shirk from the fact that there are serious challenges. We are all aware of those. We would all much prefer to leave with a deal. And the Honourable Gentleman asked what preparations are being made in order to secure a deal. I listed some of the advances that have been made in negotiations earlier. But one of the things that I would say is that we have had a chance in this House of Commons to vote for deals before, and it was the choice of his party resolutely not to vote for a deal. We could have. Hello, the right honourable gentleman should plough on. Agreement 
We could have a withdrawal agreement if only members of the Scottish National Party uh, were as good as their word and put the interests of Scotland ahead of narrow sectarian, se secessionist and separatist arguments. Uh, now, 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 um, the, uh,